Hello everyone. I hope you are all keeping so well out there and welcome to today's webinar. We are going to focus on the latest advancements in periorbital rejuvenation, combining the very latest innovative Emphase I applicator and injectables. Our expert panel, including myself, will guide you through a detailed exploration of the anatomy of the periorbital area, the impact of aging, and how these powerful treatments work together to restore youthfulness around the eyes. There's a couple of things that you need to consider, especially when we're talking about the upper eyelid. On the upper eyelid, if we do a layer by layer dissection, it is important to understand what comes after the skin and what follows deep to the skin. We sometimes need to be mindful that especially in this area, we also have some nerves and these nerves, they emerge from the respective foramen, travel deep down and then emerge into the other layers that you can appreciate here. So this is my personal experience back in November last year when I got Emphase eyes into my practice and it was 20 minutes later, non-invasive, safe, needle free, knife free, downtime free. And you can see it's improved my dark circles, my crow's feet, my light eye bags at the time. And I just looked so much fresher. Our patients looked so much fresher. This is how the treatment works. The patient is on the couch. They have two applicators around the eyes. You can see the contractions coming. I will say it feels so comfortable. I think these results are super impressive. I could not wait to be um, complete with this study as a clinical investigator and for this to be sort of pushed forward in the US. It really should be something that we are thinking about compartments around that area. So when I am looking at the under eye area, actually my eye first goes to what's going on in with the temple. Do I need to support it deeply or a little bit more superficially into the hairline? Do I need to support the mid face? One of the reasons that we get most concerned about is the vasculature in this area. Actually, Professor Kodafana, when you've dissected the infraorbital area in your dissections, at roughly what age would you see a herniation of the fat pads, just so that as injectors or EBD users can get an idea when to start treating? Now, the question is what you want to do. You need to find the proper time when um, the containment forces can still be strengthened enough to push it back. But when this is not applicable anymore, what happens is then you need the surgical approach to open this, redo some of this fat, and then you can have this retainment force. But I don't, I don't think that one excludes the other. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can maybe even do the surgical procedure first and then to tone it in more mature patients. It's almost like physical therapy prior to surgery. And then you continue that afterwards and we can do things to sort of from a regenerative space intervene and keep us at a very good point. I completely agree. And I think that that extension into a maintenance series actually benefits patients and, and they love it. They feel it, they see it, they love it. And coming back to a maintenance therapy, do you have any set protocols, whether it's three, four, six monthly? We have a number of questions here that I've asked that. Given the simil similarities of smiling, will muscle contractions from this type of treatment lead to more smile lines? Thank you for giving me all these easy questions, which I'm very happy about. 